base layer. Green oil. Three. And you can vent all that sweat out and that hot air out. Quickly cool off so you don't drive sweat and moisture into your clothing. Inside here is a saw blade inside this tubular web webbing. So the saw fits nicely around my waist. Low profile, way down low. If the wind is coming from this direction, you can pull that hood right over and block it. You can position that ball on one side or the other or forward. Find that even in 28, 30 below, I can manage when I'm active just like this. But your breath alone right here will keep a nice warm climate in front of you and, and keep your nose and stuff quite warm. Pop with big gauntlets to keep the snow out. Something large enough that you can just shoot it off. Right here with paracord, snare wire, or perfuming, in this case, snowshoe hairs. <clears throat> what we have here is the means to make snowshoes. First aid kit. Lots of debris here, lots of fallen trees here for whatever reason. There's a lake right close, happens to have fish in it. But in addition, we've got all kinds of tall dead snags here, all over the place, large ones, even hug size aspen. So locating it this way so that it comes through. Predominant wind is usually from the northwest, so we'll build the shelter accordingly. A blade wrapped around your belt and a couple of nuts, in this case bolts, and some paracord is so that you can put together a buck saw. So this would come out of the belt and we stick it in there and using uh, spruce, this is spruce branches that are peeled and, and uh, carved in such a fashion that you can put together a really good uh, buck saw to hit there you can cut a good sized log which is important for this this kind of winter shelter you need to be able to topple the biggest trees that you can to generate the biggest fire otherwise you spend your whole night wandering around collecting 
wrist thick wood and Smells like a frog bumble. This is a senior high school class could have a tug of war with the rope. They know that a flame will hold on to a match very, very nicely. The physics of it doesn't allow it to work that way. The matchstick, however, does. Nice, clean matches. Just want to climb from one stick to another. Get a dry air in. Rather than having to get down on your knees in the cold and blow, you can drive the air into it. So as you can see, you can warm somebody up in a real hurry in a matter of minutes. And you notice I built it on the logs already. A lot of people wouldn't do that, so you think of it. All the coals will drop down on the logs. The logs will then in turn catch on fire. And you're not dealing with coals melting in the snow, you get a hot bed of coals right quickly. The fire will be as long as I am tall, almost so you can get into the night. Medium heat, high heat, extra high heat. <laughs> It's a long time from 5 o'clock in the evening when it gets dark until the next day when the sun comes. king of knots or the most useful knot that if I am going to harvest live trees I'll try
try and go into a large group like this so that you only take out a certain amount of them and, and kind of caretake it in a sense or thin it out. Soil. And there's such cattails up there. Close by and readily available. Smells like mint. Oh. Jam not here. Back in the truck, I came prepared for the possibility that when it goes up quick. Lash it up here. And another bite. Oh, it's gonna be tricky. I don't want to leave it where it's nice and pulled down. Roll it right up in here. So the beauty of this shelter, uh, you still have a, a fire going here, but the radiant heat from the fire, all the smoke stays out here, so you don't get smoked out, and the heat goes inside and gets trapped. Uh, the size of your fire is considerably less than it is over here where you're heating so much space. In here you have a much more efficient, much smaller fire, much less wood is necessary to get the night. So the, the heat from the fire will come in and on this angle the heat will actually hit that. I can feel it already just against my hand. It's, it allows air to flow through it quite nicely. Hey, with the wool clothing that I have, I may not even need a fire tonight. I'd like to take this time to say uh, thanks for watching the video. Um, special thanks goes out to a few people. Uh, to the cameraman Stan for all of his work in video in making the video. And I'd like, like to also uh, extend my thanks out to my mentors, the bushcrafter instructors over the years that I've learned from. Tom Brown Jr., Alan Fry. Uh, especially Morris Kachansky. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you've seen in this video is because of Morris Kachansky and, and his methods. Uh, Kelly Harleton as well. Uh, Wilderness Awareness School and John Young. And then a special uh, thank you goes out to uh, my wife and to my kids and to all the support that I get there, which allows me the freedom to come out and, and learn all of this stuff and, and learn these skills and uh, all the support that is needed in order to be able to do this. If you uh, would like more information on other courses and programs, then check out uh, www.naturealiveprograms.com uh, you can contact me there and see what other offerings that we have. And that's all for now.